We've never achieved the vision of Nikola Tesla, the wireless transmission of electrical energy. Filling the air with high-frequency electromagnetic waves with energy levels sufficient to power your home probably wouldn't go over too well these days anyway. So we're stuck with wires. As you probably know, some materials are better at carrying charge than others. This has to do with the arrangement of electrons in the atoms that make up the material, because it's the electrons that carry electrical energy. It's a complex subject, but for our purposes here's a simplified explanation. By their nature, most atoms have equal numbers of electrons and protons. This means that most atoms are electrically, yeah, that's right, neutral. The simplest and most common atom is a hydrogen atom, one proton and one electron. An atom with two protons is helium, three lithium, and so on up to uranium with 92 protons. More elements have been created artificially, but they usually don't hang around for very long. The electrons exist in a type of cloud around the nucleus, at a distance based on how much energy they have. Every atom has distinct layers of electrons, or shells as they are called, and the shells have limits on the number of electrons they can hold. What it comes down to is this. Because of the numbers, some atoms end up with their outermost shell filled with electrons. Some end up with only one or two electrons in that outer shell, and some are in between. If I had two pieces of material, one made of atoms like the one on the left, and the other made of atoms like the one on the right, which one do you think would be more likely to be a good conductor of electricity? You pick this one, right? That outermost electron is so far from the nucleus, in the almost empty outermost shell, and repelled by all those nearby negative charges, it's just as happy to leave as it is to stay. Materials made up of nothing but atoms like this have billions of electrons, not really connected to any one particular atom. Since electrons are the carriers of electrical energy, do you think that this kind of atom would be useful for the transmission of electricity? Would it help if I told you that this was a copper atom? We call materials made of atoms like this good conductors because they have free electrons able to carry electrical charge and move it from place to place. Conducting materials, wires, ribbons, and plates are made of materials with free electrons, typically metals. Now, look at this atom. Its outer shell is holding the maximum for the second shell, eight electrons. No more electrons will fit there. This atom is very stable. It's difficult to get one of its outer electrons to move. This atom is actually neon, one of the inert gases. They're called inert because their electron structure makes them stable and unwilling to participate in electrical and chemical reactions. Materials that don't have free electrons available to carry electrical energy are called insulators. We don't normally classify neon or any of the other inert gases as insulators because it would be kind of hard to get them to remain wrapped around wires and motors. We use other materials. Here's how that works. Atoms that have spaces available in their outer shells often combine with other atoms to fill those spaces and achieve stability. Because they now have an uneven number of charges, they are not neutral and may be attracted to other atoms with an opposite charge. These combinations are called compounds, and the individual units of a compound are called molecules. Here's a perfect example. Sodium is a powdery yellow metal with one electron in its outer shell. Chlorine is a poisonous green gas with one space in its outer shell. The outer electron of the sodium atom is happy to leave, and the chlorine atom is more than happy to take it in. They get together and form a stable molecule of what? Table salt. Yep, pure sodium isn't good for you, and pure chlorine kills you. But put them together, and they're no longer a danger. They add flavor to our food. All because of what? It's A. The individual atoms are now stable, filled shells. The chlorine isn't poisonous because its poison comes from wanting to fill its outer shell and the damage that does to other materials. 
Same with the sodium, except that it gives up an electron. Neither atom is chemically reactive anymore, but since they have opposite charges, they are electrically attracted to one another and bond to form a molecule. Materials that are the best insulators are typically compounds, like ceramics or glass, rubber or paper. Because they've combined to achieve stability, they have very few free electrons to carry charge. They resist the movement of electrical charge and act as a barrier to stop that movement. That leaves us with the atoms that are in between, more than one or two electrons in the outer shell, but not filled. These materials can be made to either conduct or not by a process called doping, where elements are added that either facilitate the flow of charge or impede it. What do you think we call these materials? Semiconductors. Since computers count by twos, and flow or no flow can represent that, semiconductors are the basis of the computer industry. One of the most common semiconducting materials is silicon, hence the Silicon Valley. Although we've talked about conductors and insulators as if they were all one or the other, to tell the truth, anything can be made to carry electrical charge if there's enough electrical pressure, voltage, present. Air is actually a pretty good insulator, but if the pressure is high enough, air can conduct electrical charge. Ask anyone who's spent a summer in the Midwest. So, what have we learned about conductors and insulators? Materials made up of atoms with free electrons are good conductors, and those are usually metals, copper, silver, or gold. Stable atoms, those with filled electron shells, are good insulators, and those are typically compounds, atoms that have combined to achieve stability. Examples include paper, rubber, and glass. Atoms in between, more than one or two electrons in the outer shell, but not filled, are called semiconductors because they can be made to go either way. Well, that was conductors and insulators. I hope I've clarified some things for you. Watch my channel for more basic electricity videos.